say 57, hey, kids, what time is it? Time for Gazinta Hate Street! Time for Gazinta Hate Street! Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. We're really happy to have you with us. Morty, our off camera percussionist, <laughs> reminded me of one of my songs that I'm going to sing tonight instead of a joke to open everybody up to be able to receive the Hasidah. Where are the Jews? Where are the Jews? We got the king of the universe blue. Where are the Jews? Where are the Jews? We got the king of the universe blue. King of the universe blue. Gonna tell you a story. Gonna tell you slow. Gonna tell you slow. You know the Lord is cool and I ask him low. Where are the Jews? Where are the Jews? We got a message for you. Where are the Jews? Where are the Jews? Where are the Jews? We got the King of the Universe blue. Now God told Noah, and Moses told me, we got seven commandments for you and for me. Where the Jews, where the Jews, we got the king of the universe. Where the Jews, where the Jews, we got a message for you. Where the Jews, where the Jews. We got the king of the universe. Now come on, children. We're gonna have some fun. You ain't seen nothing like the holy one. Tell me how long do I have to wait? Can I get to be a girl? Almost a hesitation. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Gazinta H. We're going to have a first, we're going to have a story. And maybe we'll have two stories. The previous Rebbe said <clears throat> that we should receive the Torah on Shabuot, when we got the Torah, in Basimcha Ubepenimius, in a happy way and an inner way. And this is connection between Simcha's Torah and Shabuot. Simcha's Torah was the receiving of the second tablets. Was on Yom Kippur, and Simcha's Torah is the expression from Yom Kippur when Moshe went up and got the second tablets. And that was the, the real reception of the Torah that we have now. Once Simcha's Torah, a big Rebbe called the Baldichava Rav, his name was Levi Yitzhak, he saw there was a shoemaker named Reb Shmuel who was dancing very happily and enthusiastically with the Torah. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak knew that Reb Shmuel did not learn Torah a whole year. So he asked him, Reb Shmuel, did you learn Torah this year? He said, no. He said, then why are you dancing so happily with the Torah? Reb Shmuel answered, at your brother's wedding, you dance. Our Rebbe says that really, Simcha's Torah is not just a brother's wedding. It's the essential rejoicing of every Jew over the fact that the Torah was given to him personally. In fact, had even the most unlearned Jew been missing when we got the Torah, Hashem would not have given it. The Torah testifies the Torah that Moshe commanded us is an inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. Like any inheritance, 
Ownership doesn't depend on the talents, on the level, on the intellect of the one who's inheriting. As long as he is a son, he's a Jew, he inherits the Torah. Therefore, all Jews are, are equal in receiving the Torah from the most accomplished scholar to the least learned person. Yet, the Rebbe wrote, notes something surprising. The rejoicing of the simple man on Simcha's Torah has a greater quality than the rejoicing of a learned person. How do we know? Because Shmuel's enthusiastic dancing affected and increased the simcha of the big rabbi, the Bodhisattva Why? Because the scholar's rejoicing is mixed up with his happiness and what he knows. And this knowledge blocks the level of pure joy that a simple person achieves. As a result, the simple person does not have to rejoice on the same level as the great scholar or the learned person, but the sage, the learned person, has to learn how to rejoice on the level like the simple person does. Even with all your broad knowledge and understanding, you have never approached the essence of the Torah. The essence of the Torah is hidden from all creation. What is it? It's the delight of Hashem in his own essence. And that realization has to be internalized on the level of pure faith, faith which is removed from intellect. In this way, he will merit to receive the unlimited essence of the Torah, which will in turn add to his own level of understanding. Rabbi Shmuel referred to a wedding as a metaphor for receiving the Torah. So too, the, the giving of the Torah is described as a wedding between Hashem and the Jewish people. A wedding is an example of great simcha. As such, it break, simcha breaks through all barriers. And for this learned guy, whichever level of Torah he has not reached yet, he will finally achieve, as he continues going higher and higher, with great strength. Because of his acceptance of the fact that really he's equal with the simple guy. The recipe for tonight is creamy cashew dressing. And you can um, experiment with a little. The way I did it, you take a good fat handful of cashews, you soak them in water overnight. The next day you put them in a food processor with a quarter of a teaspoon of curry powder, quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a cup of water. I put in a little cayenne pepper, you put in whatever you spices you like to taste, and judge it up real good until it's creamy, and it makes a nice, delicious dress. Now we're going to have a musical interlude. Woohoo! Oh, okay, go in. Alright. This is a poem. Oh, a poem, yeah. Why? What do you want, a poem? What is the poem? I'm just asking you. Okay, another poem from the great Jewish poet Ian Heiss from the Blueprints of the Universe.
and Ross Tav, I'm not going to say the whole story. But one time, the previous Rebbe was walking with his father, the Rebbe Rashab. And the Rebbe Rashab was explaining a deep topic of godliness. And the previous Rebbe, his son, was concentrating what his father was saying so much. When his father stopped walking, he kept walking. His father called him back by name and said, Yosef, give up. The previous Rebbe ran back to his father. And the Rebbe Rashad told him this thing that for me is this amazing wisdom. He told him, what is the difference between human intellect and godly intellect. You hear this? He's telling him the difference between human intellect and godly intellect. You ever heard such a thing in your life? He said human intellect starts with intellect and finally ends up at a Muna. Because human intellect finally realizes that there is a God in the world that you have to have faith in. He says, Godly intellect starts with a Muna, starts with faith, and works its way down and to be dressed into human intellect. And an amazing thing happened. The place where the Rebbe Rashab stopped walking was a house that later became the headquarters of the KGB, the Russian secret police. And the previous Rebbe, as the Rebbe was summoned there 
to be interrogated a few times. And one of the times he was asked that question, what is the difference between human intellect and godly intellect? And he had what to answer. Now last time, I was saying, <coughs> and the last uh, few shows we were saying, what is the foundation of Jewish intellect, uh, 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 Jewish education, is to teach a child that there is a live God in the world who is not only involved in the world, but is involved with him personally. And last week, we explained, and this is a thing from the Rebbe, these things are not from me, I am just telling you things I learned from the Rebbe, that we teach a child that a thing does not move on his own. That if he wants a drink of water, he has to lift the cup. The cup will not lift by itself. And so too, the objects in the sky, the heavenly objects, cannot move by themselves. The moon moves around because there's someone who's moving it, who has great power to be able to move such a heavy object as the moon. And how much more so to move a heavier object like the sun. And how much more so to move the whole orbit of all of the universe. All of the stars and the planets and everything that's in the universe, it can't move itself. There has to be somebody who's moving it. <clears throat> now, I was going over this thing, I was practicing it, and somebody heard me saying it, and he told me, he said, that's gravity. In other words, he was telling me, that's not a godly action, that's a natural action. But what he wasn't getting is that natural action is really the power of Hashem that's making that happen, but Hashem hides himself in nature. That's called the Shem Malakim. That really that thing that's called gravity is a theory by human intellect of why it is that all the stars and the planets move around in a certain way. But really what's happening here, according to Torah, according to the Rambam, is all these heavenly bodies have an intelligence. And they realize there is one who creates them. And the light from the higher level than them comes into them, into their neshama, in such a way that it fills them up to the point where they're doing a continuous somersault. They're singing praises to Hashem and they're doing a continuous bowing down to the Shechina in the West. Some guy who came along with a human intelligence who understands that there's a power of gravity. So, as we got to the level of Amuna, uh, I said last week that it says that Hashem created the world with two letters. With the Yud, He created the world to come. With the He, He created this world. You ask the question, what do you mean with two letters? Well, a Yud is just a little line on a piece of paper. When you say it, say it it's a Yud Vav Dalet. And each one of those letters, Yud Vav Dalet, is also spelled out. The first Yud is Yud Vav Dalet. And the Vav is a Vav Aleph Vav, or Vav Vav, however it's spelled in different ways in different combinations. And the Dalet is a Dalet Lamed, <coughs> however it is spelled. And through those two letters, 
and combinations of those letters, the whole world was created. But Hashem himself, just like if we look at ourselves and we say two letters compared to the speech that we spoke in our whole life is completely nothing. And how much more so two letters compared to our feelings of how we express everything that we said in our life. And how much more so <coughs> our intellect and how much more so our time, our, our, our enjoyment and uh, 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 our desire level and the essence of the neshama, two letters take no place at all. And how much more so by Hashem, who's completely without limit, two letters take no place at all. And these two letters are with what creates and enlivens the world. And from this realization, a person will have great delight in godliness of how he is completely exalted and removed from the world and at the same time is creating the world in such a hidden way that you don't even notice it and i said that this week we would and and that's how it affects the intellect and that's called know this day that avaya zelokim and then it says, take unto your heart the Nebai Zalakim, and that means our uh, 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 emotion attributes. And I said this week we're going to go into the emotion attributes, but I'm going to push it off to next week, because once we got to Amuna, I want to talk a little bit about Moshiach, which this show that we're doing is all about Moshiach. And in particular, how we can live with Mashiach. So, if you remember, we're, the main book that we're learning here is the essence of Hasidus, and this is it in Hebrew, it's called Inyon Nishel Torahs of Hasidus, by the Rebbe. And we said, that the Torah of Hasidus, the Baal Shem Tov told us in a letter that he went up to the palace of Mashiach. And he asked him, when are you going to come? And Mashiach answered him, when your wellsprings of your wisdom are spread out. In other words, when Mashiach is spread out all over the world, when the wellsprings of Hasidus are spread out all over the world, then you'll have Mashiach. So the reward of spreading out this teaching of the words of the living God called Chassidah, the reward of it is that we're going to get Mashiach. And the Rebbe says, from the reward, you can know what the thing is. For example, when you tell the little kid he's going to win an ice cream cone, that's a level of he gets a reward for what he does. You tell a little kid he's going to get a bicycle, so you understand that from this great reward is according to the work that he does. So here we're saying the reward of spreading out Hasidus is Moshiach. So the Rebbe says, in order to understand the greatness of spreading out Hasidus, let's look at what the reward entails. When Mashiach comes, there's going to be a bunch of new things in the world. We're going to have a revelation that the Jews are going to be redeemed from their exile. And the Shechina is going to be revealed redeemed from his exile. Hashem also is going to come out of the exile. Because when the Jews go into the exile, Hashem also goes into exile. When Mashiach comes, we're going to be redeemed, and Hashem is going to be redeemed. And 
a higher level of revelation is not just we're going to be redeemed and Hashem is going to be redeemed. All of the Jews are going to be wise and knowledgeable in knowing Hashem. And they're going to know all of the secrets of godliness. And they're going to understand the das, the knowledge of Hashem. Like it says, the whole earth will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem when Mashiach comes. And a higher level than that, a fourth higher level, there's going to be a change in nature. Things are going to happen according to miracles. The earth is going to give out cooked bread called the light bread and it's going to give out garments that are already made, silken garments that we're going to be able to wear. And the grapes that are going to grow up, like it says, is one grape we're going to squeeze is going to fill up a barrel of wine. But it says in the Gemara, there's no difference between this world and when Mashiach comes, except we're going to have a Jewish king over the world. The Rebbe says, yeah, that's only the beginning of the days of Mashiach. Finally, it's going to develop into miracles. And the level of godliness that's higher than nature is going to be revealed down here in nature. And not only that, and this is the thing that I don't really understand, it's going to be revealed down here, and not only down here, it's going to be revealed in the higher worlds. Moshiach is going to be revealed in the world of Atsilas. How does that work? Why? Because the higher worlds depend on what happens down here. But even after all of these amazing levels, what's going to happen when Moshiach comes? That is not the essence of Moshiach. The essence of Mashiach, Mashiach depends on Yechida. Like we said. Hasidus is Yechida and Mashiach is Yechida. And now we're going to have a musical interview. What's we have? It looks like we have a request for bumbity bum bum bim bum bim bum. Oh, bumbity <laughs> bim bum bim bum that, bum. The, it, it's, that's what the official name is, isn't it? Ready? Here we go. <laughs>
that's how we've been saying the whole time. There are four levels of the neshama. Nefesh, ruach, neshama, and chaya, which are expressions of the neshama, but the essence of the neshama is a level called yechida, the only one, which is connected to yachid of Hashem's onlyness. So too, in the levels of the revelations of Mashiach, we told you four levels. One, the Jews get out of Golas. Two, the Shechina gets out of Golas. Three, there's miracles <laughs> in the world. And four, the Jews have great knowledge and wisdom. But none of them comes up to the essence of what Mashiach is, and which is connected to the fifth level of essence, Chassidus, which is a new drawing down from the inner level of the godly crown all the way up to the Ain So, to the Infinite One, blessed be He, it's coming down into the world through this Chassidus. That when Mashiach comes, because Yechida will be revealed, everything will be perfect. Oh, yeah. We want Moshiach now. <laughs> now we're going to have our sign off. Okay. Oh, oh, everybody in, everybody in. Okay, you ready? Let's go, ready? Gazette! Gazette!